So I'm going to show why you don't get an aftermarket water pump for Miata. Stick with your OEM. We know we're shit. Yeah. Thanks for watching the Daily Drift. Okay, so there goes Austin. He's off to the parts store. So guys, welcome back. So basically, you guys saw we ran into an issue where we had a big old leak on the engine. And then we tried to figure it out. We started working on getting it done. And uh, we thought, well, it's probably the water pump. It's a cheap, shitty water pump. Maybe that's what it was. I don't know. Turns out it was something else. Very simple. Very stupid. But still required removing all that crap. Getting the timing belt back off. See this little guy right here? This little guy right here is the source of all our frustration. Yeah. So if you can take a guess of what that is, it's this. So if you look here, this is the uh, water neck. Yeah, so this went on here, and Austin took the water neck. He's going to get a new part. But this little piece right here, basically what happened is, so you could see where it basically got squished. And because it got squished, it didn't, uh, it didn't seal properly because it fell out of the groove. And what we're going to do this time to try to fix that problem is we're going to put a little bit of RTV on it, which... I probably should have done from the beginning, but you know, we all make mistakes here and there. So yeah, so this was the source, and you can see right here where it's it was kind of wet right under here, but it was dry everywhere else, and the surface of the water pump was perfectly fine. Like behind here when we took it off, it was completely dry, obviously until we pulled that out. But like up here, completely dry. Basically, now what we're going to do is I'm going to work on getting all this gasket material off and get the water pump reinstalled and... All that boring stuff, and then hopefully, hopefully today will be the day that we get to start this car and finally get this thing running and then go take it for a jet test drive. I mean, this has been like a very long process, and it's because little stupid things like O-rings. I mean, these little guys, this little thing right here is what caused all our frustration. Like, it's like a two-cent piece, but it, it happens, and this is just how it goes, so... I'm gonna get started on this, start scraping away at these gaskets and getting all this stuff ready to go. And Austin should be back soon with the new O-ring and uh, we'll get this thing put back together. So let's do it. Okay, so here what we have is the uh, water pump from the last one. And you can see, I mean, it is, it's not bad. Like there's a couple of things that are a little messed up, but it looks all right. So the big thing is here, it had this metal gasket, which we put on and it seems to be okay. And all I'm going to do, and hopefully this will fix the problem, is I'm just going to basically remove this gasket and clean it up. And then we're going to reuse it because it's made out of metal. I mean, as long as I don't bend this thing too bad, it should be okay. Hopefully. Because, yeah, it's yeah, it's metal. Completely metal. And I don't see, it wasn't leaking out this side, which is the side that sometimes they get drilled off where they don't get enough thread engagement. But this one seems perfectly fine. So yeah, so I'm going to go ahead and clean this up. So rip what we just did with all this gasket crap because this pump is shit. Bring in the OEM pump. Okay, so what we're looking at is right here. You see this? This lip here, much thicker, much, much thicker than this lip. If you look at this lip, it's very, very small. So if you look at those two lips there, you can see this is why you don't buy a cheap water pump, okay? This is going to have more sealing surface as it goes in and it's going to secure it more. Whereas this is much less. It's almost half the size. Maybe like 25% of the size. Like that right there is a big difference. It may not be the entire issue, but it's definitely part of it. Okay, so when you're looking at this, you can see here, you see this ring here. That is not very big. That is about, that's about an eighth of an inch. This ring here is a quarter of an inch. This lip right here is a quarter of an inch on the OEM pump. And it's an eighth of an inch on this aftermarket pump. The aftermarket pump's all nice and shiny and it looks nice, but that right there is probably one of the main sources of why this thing is leaking. That's not good. Not to mention that when you measure these things up and you measure them up next to each other, this one here measures in at three and an eighth of an inch. And this one here, which is off center, which you could probably see if you look at this ring, it's off center. Look at that. There's a lip there, and then over here, it's not even centered. That's, that's, like what? Okay, and then we're going to measure this one, and we're looking at 
three and one sixteenths. So this is a sixteenth of an inch off from the OEM the OEM water pump because this has a much it's it's gonna fit much tighter. So I'm gonna go put these on the car and show you what I mean by that. So aftermarket, like it's a lot of play. OEM. That's it. That's all there is. So you definitely stick with the OEM and not this shitty aftermarket. Okay, so I just spent some time cleaning up Austin's uh, original pump. Um, you can tell it's, <laughs> look at that. Can you see that? Let's see. So if you look there, you can see made in Japan. GMB is the brand. So if you're looking for a replacement water pump, GMB is the way to go for sure. This one, I don't see like any markings or branding of any type. This is a super cheap Amazon, like $20 water pump. So don't get the super cheap Amazon water pump. I don't even think they were confident enough to put their own brand name behind it. So yeah, I'm gonna go with, it's just garbage. Um, so we're just not even gonna run this. Yeah, so don't get the super cheap water pumps. Looks like Austin just got back. Let's go show him the good news when he gets here. I found a uh, O-ring that is similar, but not exact. How close? Come on, you wanna see? AutoZone, Advance, O'Reilly, none of them had it. And then this is your water pump, thermostat housing, uh, gasket maker. Okay. So I was thinking using this and one of yeah. these. Because watch how close it is. It's a little tight, that's the problem. So, tight is okay. So we got we got the fat ones and we got the skinny ones. I think it's the skinny one is better. Okay. And if I remember correctly, these two are the same, yeah. I mean it's like just barely like Does it seat in there? No, it like tries to pop out. That's a problem, yeah. That's what I'm worried about. So I so think, I think that's gonna... what happened when I did it. At least I got this and some coolant. Yeah. Um, so basically we couldn't find an o-ring for this uh water neck thing, so we're gonna try something a little bit different. You mind? Telling us what we got going on. So as you can tell, I'm cleaning the surface. I'm getting all the old gunk out with my wire brush. I went and I got this uh, Permatex water pump and thermostat housing RTV, specifically made to resist like water glycol and all the other chemicals and coolant and things of that nature. Looked it up online and it's good for negative 65 degrees Fahrenheit to 500 degrees Fahrenheit. And my engine better not get over 500 degrees at any point in its life. So what we're gonna do is, you know, well, make our own gasket. So we're gonna take this here, fill up that hole, make it nice and even, then put a little bit of excess out here just to be safe, plop this sucker back on, put the water pump back on, and then put everything back together, set the timing, and hopefully we get to start this bitch today. So. Well, we won't be able to with the RTV. Oh, uh, you're right, damn. Yeah, that was one little detail. So yeah, uh, it needs 24 hours to cure. Yeah. So I just remembered that. Now, the logical thing to do would be to just put the water pump, the thermostat housing, and just kind of let it all set there and wait till it cures and then fill it and see if it leaks. Correct. But there's another option, and that option involves taking a little bit of risk. We're going to assemble the whole thing and just get it ready to go. So hopefully we can just start it up tomorrow, and hopefully it doesn't leak. If it leaks, then we've just wasted a shitload of time. We have to redo it yet again so if you're doing this you may want to just be patient do it the right way we got we got a car meet coming up and we want to make it over the weekend and in order for that to happen we can't pussyfoot around with this so we're yeah. just we're just gonna send it so that's what we're gonna do and uh, i want it on the record that it was uh my choice to send it because kyle was the one that brought up the logical explanation of waiting but uh today is probably the best day for me to be able to work on it all day so we're just gonna put it together now so that he doesn't have to do the work without me later yeah so yeah well and that's the thing too sometimes you know unlike most normal people on youtube who can just do youtube all day every day you know normal people can't do that so we have to plan our time when we can actually work on it this is the time we have so we're gonna do it yeah that, that's a big that's a big thing right there because a lot of people that you see on youtube they they Typically, like the ones that you watch normally, Rice for Miata, um, more skids now. I mean, they used to have regular jobs too. But um, Adam LZ, all these guys, this is their job. Like, they get paid for it. So they don't have to do anything else. They can just work on their cars and get paid to do it. For us, I mean, we're just a small channel. We still have to be able to make money somehow. We got other things going on in life too, trying to focus on future endeavors. And uh, we just got to work with what we got. So. 
just using the time we have is uh, very crucial for us because if I can't work on it today, I might not be able to work on it and then miss the car show. So, you know, just got to take a gamble sometimes. You got to do what you got to do. It's like thrusting. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, welcome back. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We were talking about a song. So anyway, we're just going to slap this sucker on there. We got little layer of RTV and the metal gasket as well as the one down there. And we're just going to slap this puppy on there. You want to do the so honest? Ner I'm so nervous. Just be careful. You got it. My first time. There we go. All right, good. Wait, is that... I mean... Yeah, it's fine. Just get the bolts in there. It'll hold it in place. It will pull it? Yeah, it'll line it up. So, yeah, so we're just going to go do that real quick. And we'll be right back. It was at this moment, Kyle knew, he fucked up. Did it just get loose? Huh? No. Where? Turn. It's not loose. Why is it spinning? Because I'm not moving and I saw that gear move. Did something just break? Look, the gears are moving. And what? the cam is not. How are those able to turn when the cam is not? Think something is wrong inside here now. Something's fucked up because those should not turn separate from this. They have a locator pin on them. I'm thinking maybe the locator pin snapped. So guys, one thing to uh, note is when you're doing this, don't try to crank down your crank bolt while holding the cams because we just made a massive boo-boo. And you'll see in here, this is a very, very bad thing. That one's good. You notice this one looks okay, right? Okay, but this one, Snap right off, right in there, right inside the cam. So yeah, we're gonna have to fix that. So guys, a few things. Number one, don't use the camshaft to tighten down the uh, crank bolts unless if you have a tool for it. It's really stupid. I thought that having it in gear would work, like we could just put it in gear and it would hold the engine from moving and it didn't for some reason. So we're gonna try a trick. Somebody said put it in fifth gear and you have somebody lay on the brake and then that should helpfully do it and keep it from turning and then we should be able to tighten it up that way which i thought that would work but it didn't work for us earlier that's why we didn't do that um and then secondly i'm gonna take this drill and try to drill out that cam without screwing it up so wish me luck okay let me try to turn it yeah Yeah, it was, it was there. Yeah, I think it was already at the torque because it was the, that, that movement you saw was the crankshaft moving. As soon as it stopped moving, it already clicked to maybe past 87. It's on there, definitely on there. Here we go. Oh, shit. 
shit. God damn it. What the fuck? Almost dropped the camera right into this coolant thing, but instead we lost the socket. Ugh. Now we'll do it. I always forget I have these things, but a punch comes in super, super handy. That way I got a nice starting point for my drill. Now it should be pretty easy to set up right dead center. So much easier. I don't want to go too far, but uh, we gotta get through there. Oh, there we go. Okay, I'm through. So now you can see we got a nice big old hole, and that hole is what we're gonna use to get this pin out. Ha! Ah. Now pliers. Got it, sweet. Boom, success. Well guys, it's looking like we're going to have to find a dowel pin for this thing because we can't find anything that fits properly. So we're going to have to try like fasten all or lows or something. So we'll get back to you guys as soon as we know. Um, might be this video, might be the next one, I don't know. We'll have to see. But uh, we're going to go do some searching and we'll get back to you. So guys, if you can't tell, it's a new day and uh, we're back at it. And uh, you didn't miss a thing, but we certainly did. So this thing's had all day to sit, so it's technically been 24 hours, so the water pump's good to go. But we still gotta get that camshaft fixed. And Austin's back here, and he managed to get some stuff fixed. So, 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 okay. As we all know what a dowel pin is. This is a dowel pin. This is what I broke on the camshaft. So I looked online last night. The only place we could find that had dowel pins was a place called Fasten All. I'm not sure if it's nationwide or not. Is it nationwide? Yeah. Okay, Fasten All. Um, I looked online, they said they have a 5mm um, dowel pin, so I was like, okay, cool, but they close at 5 o'clock. So yesterday, we weren't able to make it there. Uh, I was like, okay, I'll do it first thing in the morning. Fast forward to today, I go to Fastenal. I ask for a 5mm dowel pin, and they're like, nope, we don't have any metric ones. So I was like, oh, okay, here we go. So this dowel pin, I was like, okay, maybe I could get some SAE that might fit. So this is a 5 16th dowel pin. That's what this is. Thought it might fit, but it was a little bit too big once I got home and tried it. So I also got another bolt. This is a hardened steel um, M6. So it's a little bigger than the M5. And I was like, well, as you can tell, we have threads on this side and a head on this side. But right here in the center is a smooth piece of hardened steel. So I was like, okay, well, if I cut these threads and this head, I might be able to make this work. So, taking this bolt, I made this little guy. So I did exactly what I said, where I cut the threads and the head off. And as you can see, it's kind of tapered a little bit. This side's a little fatter, because this is the side we're going to pound into the, uh, the camshaft. So this should hopefully be a pressure fit. And then this mm -hmm. side is going to locate the cam gear. And this is going to be really cool if this works. And this is really strong, too. It's like 12.9, something like that. 12.9. I don't know if you can read that, see it. it's not but focusing. Yeah. it's really freaking strong. So hopefully this will work, and uh, you know you just gotta use what you got, and this is what I got. So let's see. We're gonna insert this. Hopefully. Oh, little camshaft make sure, action. Make sure not to do that. That's probably good. It doesn't feel like it's gonna pull out, does it? Like, yeah, that's in there. <laughs> That ain't coming out. Did it work? Look at that. It's about the right size. It's a little long, but not much. I mean, it can be a little long. Yeah. Cool. Sweetness. Hell yeah. Yeah. When in doubt, hammer that out. out. Might be kind of hard to see, but if you look right there, you can see because we pressed this in wrong, it cracked. So our camshaft is cracked. And now we need to find a new camshaft. looks like this bolt here rubbed on the radiator down there and now I'm gonna save some of this coolant we got a leak I have my OEM radiator which works 